Welcome back, my menopausal friends. <laughs> I'm so glad to meet with you again. I'm Menopause Barbie, your menopause tailor, helping you tailor everything you need in order to manage your menopause your way. Most women who watch my video tutorials are shocked to discover all the things they didn't know. Some of those things have to do with what people consider common knowledge. The problem is that most of it isn't knowledge, it's misinformation. And the other problem is that mis this misinformation is so common that nobody realizes it's misinformation. <laughs> That's why I tell you to watch my videos in order starting with the very first one. So much of what you think you know is all wrong. Another category of things most women don't know constitutes uncommon knowledge. It's the stuff that is really important, but sadly, most women have never heard anything about it. Today's topic is one of those things. The subject for today is how your pregnancies affect your menopause. Did you even know that your pregnancies affect your menopause? See what I mean? Most women have no idea that there is a connection between the two. In my book, I discuss these things individually with the topic to which they each pertain. But here, I'm going to present them all together. One of the things I love most about these videos is that I can approach things from different angles and that helps you see the big picture more easily. Sometimes you get so caught up with just one factor, one symptom, or one disease that you fail to look at menopause as a whole. So this video helps you to see the overall effect of your pregnancies on your menopause. If you've ever been pregnant, you need to watch this video. If you have never been pregnant, you need to watch this video. Either way, you're going to learn something really important with regard to how your pregnancies, or lack thereof, affect your menopause. So there are four areas in which your pregnancy affects your menopause. They include your urinary tract, your breast density, your risk for breast cancer, and your risk for ovarian cancer. I'll go through each of these and explain the effects that pregnancy has on your menopause. The first is your urinary tract. Now you know from way back in video 11, which was on the signs and symptoms of menopause, that one of the symptoms of menopause is urinary incontinence. Urinary incontinence means leakage of urine. And one of the most prominent causes of urinary incontinence is pressure on your bladder. So here I have a model of your pelvis. Now I'm going to tilt this towards you so that you can see all the structures. This is her spine. This is her pubic bone. This white structure is her uterus. And right here, the red thing is her bladder. Now, now that you recognize the parts, let's position this pelvis to reflect the fact that you don't go through your life lying down on your back. You spend most of your life upright, walking or sitting, right? So most of your life, your pelvis is oriented like this. Again, this is your spine. This is your pubic bone. And this white thing is your uterus. But look, when you're upright, your uterus is on top of your bladder. It sits directly on top of your bladder its entire life. So what happens when you get pregnant? Well, your uterus starts growing. It goes from this to this to this. 
and to this, and even bigger than that. But it doesn't only increase in size, it also increases in weight. Your uterus becomes 500 times larger and 15 times heavier when you get pregnant. So what do you think that does to your bladder? Your bladder has to withstand all that weight and pressure for months and months and months. And when it's time to deliver the baby, what do you do? You push for hours and hours and hours. And eventually, you push an eight pound human being out of your vagina right past your bladder. So do you think your bladder sustains all that trauma without any permanent effects? Of course not. Pregnancy causes your bladder to be irreparably, irreparably harmed. And if you have multiple pregnancies and put your bladder through all that trauma again and again, it does not recover. The result is that at menopause, it sags. And when it sags, it leaks. So the bottom line is that pregnancy affects your menopause by worsening the extent to which your bladder sags. And that affects the extent to which you leak urine. Generally speaking, the more pregnancies you've had, the more you leak urine at menopause. Or how much time you spent pregnant has a whole lot to do with how much you leak. The more time you spent pregnant, the more you leak. Sorry, but you can see the logic in this, right? I spend time teaching you logic, and that way you don't have to wonder if something is true or not. Next is your breast density, breast density. In video 144, I gave you a detailed explanation on the different kinds of tissues in your breast. If you haven't watched that video, you're probably not gonna understand what I present here. I work so hard to present these videos in just the right order to ensure your understanding. If you're not watching them in order from the very first one, you are really shooting yourself in the foot. You should take advantage of the fact that I'm an anal, neurotic, pedantic, perfectionistic surgeon. <laughs> I promise you that I leave nothing out. And if you watch them in order, you'll understand everything. So, while I will not repeat what I presented in video 144, I will just summarize it here to make it relevant to this tutorial. When you're young, before you ever get pregnant the very first time, you have a lot of dense breast tissue. The name of that dense breast tissue is fibrocystic tissue. And it's entirely normal. Yes, it's lumpy. Yes, it makes your breasts hurt before your periods. But it's also the stuff that makes your breasts so perky and pretty when you're young. It's completely normal. There is no such thing as fibrocystic disease. It's not a disease any more than green eyes or, and curly hair are. <laughs> it's just something that confuses you a bit. But then you go and get pregnant. And because your breasts exist for the sole purpose of feeding your newborn, they begin to change during your pregnancy. That firm fibrocystic tissue transforms into glandular tissue. The glands are what fill with milk for the baby. And whether you breastfeed or not, that tissue never goes back to being as firm as it once was. Quite the opposite, in fact. No, pregnancy turns that firm fibrocystic tissue into fatty tissue. That's why your breasts sag after pregnancy and breastfeeding. Fat sags. It isn't perky or firm. Now, the reason this is important at menopause has to do with mammograms. Mammograms are one of the two ways in which you can detect breast cancer early. The other one is doing your self-breast exam. Self-breast exam enables you to feel breast cancer early. Mammograms enable us to see breast cancer early. But here's the catch. The more 
fibrocystic your breasts, the more difficult it is to read your mammogram. Conversely, the fattier your breasts, the easier it is to read your mammogram. Trying to read a mammogram with a lot of fibrocystic tissue is like looking through a glass of milk. But reading a mammogram with fatty tissue is like looking through a glass of water. Hugely different in terms of reading. Mammograms with fibrocystic tissue are difficult to read, which means it's more difficult to find breast cancer early. Mammograms with fatty tissue are easy to read, which means it's easier to find breast cancer early. This is why your pregnancies affect your menopause. The bottom line is that the more pregnancies you've had, the fattier your breasts, and the easier it is to read your mammogram and find breast cancer earlier. And that brings us to the next way in which your pregnancies affect your menopause. Independent of what I just taught you about mammograms, your pregnancies affect your risk for breast cancer itself. Every disease has a list of factors that determine your risk for that particular disease. Some diseases have long lists of risk factors. Other diseases have a short list of risk factors. Breast cancer has a long list of risk factors. Some are more significant than others. And it just so happens that your pregnancies are a very significant factor for determining your risk for breast cancer. Now this is very interesting if you believe that estrogen causes breast cancer. And that's because the more pregnancies you've had, the lower your risk for breast cancer. But the more pregnancies you've had, the higher your estrogen levels have been over the course of your reproductive life. And the more pregnancies you've had, the longer your estrogen levels have been high. Do you see how that doesn't gel with the assumption that estrogen causes breast cancer? Conversely, the fewer pregnancies you've had, the higher your risk for breast cancer. Obviously, you're probably past the age when you can do anything about changing the number of pregnancies you've had. But knowing things like this really helps you to get a handle on your risks for various diseases. And moving on to ovarian cancer, the very same thing is true. The more pregnancies you've had, the lower your risk for ovarian cancer. And the fewer pregnancies you've had, the higher your risk for ovarian cancer. Cancer. So in summary, your pregnancies affect your menopause in four different ways. The more pregnancies you've had, the more you leak urine at menopause. The more pregnancies you've had, the more fatty your breasts are at menopause and the easier it is to read your mammograms. The more pregnancies you've had, the lower your risk for breast cancer. And the more pregnancies you've had, the lower your risk for ovarian cancer. As you can see, pregnancy affects your menopause in some ways that are positive and in some ways that are negative. And that basic principle is something you'll see again and again and again with just about everything we talk about. Everything, absolutely everything has both advantages and disadvantages. You'll see this with regard to your personal history, your personal characteristics, and your personal options. It's a balancing act for each and every one of us. We all have some things that are favorable and others that are unfavorable. That's why I spend so much time teaching you facts and helping you tailor them to yourself. That's why you have to do what's right for you. If you ever want me to help you tailor everything specifically to you and find your best options, schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation. I do them on Skype, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger. Just go to menopausetailor.me and choose your time. Then designate all the things you want to discuss. And you can even send me labs and imaging studies and I'll incorporate them into the session. 
I'll create a document that gives you the background education on everything you want to discuss. I'll tailor it to you and then I'll send it to you 24 hours before the session. And you'll have time to read it before we meet. You'll be shocked at how much I put into the consultation even before we meet. The documents are usually about 6 to 12 pages long. Some are up to 24 pages long. And when we meet online, I'll have props to further enhance your understanding. See, I have the time to educate you. Your doctor does not. That 10 minutes a year in your doctor's office, there's no way, no way you can get that kind of education like I can give it to you here. See, I do this full time, so schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. So I'll tell you goodbye for now. We'll meet again in a week when I'll discuss similarities and conflicts between menopause and thyroid disease. Until then, Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure you have subscribed to my channel, and I'll see you in a week. Bye.